Welcome back. Let's take a look at a game I ended up playing yesterday um, in the Chicago Industrial Chess League. So I was playing on board three uh, against an opponent I've not had the opportunity to play against before. Uh, already on move two, they took me out of book here. I've not seen this move order against knight f6. Um, or rather, you'll find that if you look at the Lee Chess database, I've played against this before, and I always play c5 here. And then I always get a really crappy position. And so uh, I was kind of reasoning, okay, I should figure out a decent way for me to play this. I'm playing on board three. I should have some chances to win from this opening, uh, playing on board three against such what to me looks like a slack move on move two. I would have expected like c4 or knight f3 or g3 or knight c3 if I've not said that already, um, or even bishop g5. Um, there's a lot of ways to play this, but the way it got played here just didn't sit well with me at all. Um, again, I've in blitz play online, I've always played c5 here. And recently, both in online blitz and in over the board blitz at my local club, um, I've been punished heavily for playing c5. So I figured, okay, I don't know the book move here. I started considering things like d6 and g6 and b6 even, threatening to do like a Queen's Indian. Um, so I started considering all these possibilities. d6 is pretty solid, but unambitious. Um, I maybe considered c6 a little bit. Maybe it's worth further consideration. I'm not particularly great at this position. Um, but yeah, eventually, like five minutes in sitting looking at that, I settled on playing e6, which is flexible and lends itself to the possibility of playing uh, b6 and a queen's Indian sort of thing. Granted, I don't really play the queen's Indian a whole lot. So I'm super out of my depth here. And truthfully, in the game, this whole idea of playing h6 and g5 didn't occur to me at all. So, like, e6 is probably the wrong move for me until I start playing that opening a bit more often. So maybe in online blitz I'll play the Queen's Indian a bit more until I finally understand it even though I tend to get pummeled really hard whenever I play it. I don't know. But if I want to improve, i got to play it more. So yeah, I play default back to playing my old tricks, kind of, sort of. I mount more and more pressure on the d4 square. I'm really trying to coerce my opponent into playing pawn c3 to defend that. Um, or otherwise to back the hell off and, like, slow down, give me some time to activate all my pieces. But no, they continue unabated. They continue, so I apply even more pressure. And this really does coerce a response. Um, but that wasn't the response I was expecting. This response is pretty weird. Like, if you've played this opening before, you would be playing like knight c3 and queen d2 and sacking the b-pawn, castling and building up a monster initiative. So, like, this is completely reasonable, at least in my mind. Oh, wait, did I miss something? I've gotten punished pretty heavily in lines like this before. Um, this is kind of super dangerous for black. So black probably wouldn't take the pawn here. And if black's not taking the pawn immediately because black wants to do something, 
then this gives white time to like play this and then if you take that there's the castle and the rook b1 and all that good stuff so yeah i i think there's time for knight c3 here um i think knight c3 works in a lot of other positions i assume it works here b3 is just completely giving up a move and yeah i get it i've played a similar move in other positions where i'm playing the white pieces and i just give up the tempo with b3 so i can play b3 and c4 in peace and it's an equal game and you have to fight your way back to an advantage later and it's unpleasant but if you don't know what you're doing it you it's safe um but no i decide you know this looks interesting um chess is a game and it's meant to be played as a game so i decide you know let's let's play a game here let's see where this goes what's the worst that can happen we lose a game um but no like after the game my opponent had pointed out um this idea I'm just able to fling this right away, uh, which actually maybe my opponent and I post game were taking a look with the aid of an engine on a tablet, um, and I don't remember the name of the engine unfortunately. Might have been Hierarchs or H I A R C S Hierarchs or something like this. I don't recall, but yeah. H6, G5 is super common. Maybe it was the engine that recommended that one. I would give credit to the specific engine, but I just don't remember the name of it. I looked on the device, couldn't figure it out. Um, but yeah, we ended up playing this. I attacked their bishop. I expected them to just castle or knight d2 or something. But they tried to save the bishop, which loses a tempo. Um, then we exchange here. And this exposes kind of the madness of the position here. Um, there is a best move here. During the game, I didn't see it. And my opponent didn't really know what to make of this position either. I was looking at like bishop f1 or king f1 or rook g1 or who knows what. Um, and thinking, okay, if they play one of these kind of weird moves, I'm just going to drop the knight back to g6. Um, unless I have something better. Um, but yeah, in this position, uh, the move that kind of like rebukes what I've done is bishop f3. And suddenly my knight is looking extremely stupid on this square. Um... So much so that, like, yeah, this knight f4 really can't be considered here. I know I played it. This is my big idea, and I went ahead and played it, and I kind of got away with it. Um, so I was lucky, but I shouldn't count on being lucky. So, uh, yeah, knight f5 here, uh, Horses, bishop g3 because they're not going to play pawn g3 to keep the bishop and they don't have a different way to keep it so black has a slight plus black's disadvantage here is failure to play d5 or d6 anything to get that bishop out of c8 so i evaluated this as slightly better for black if it was hierarchs then the engine said that um our hierarchs said that this position is actually just even not advantageous for me because my damn c8 bishop is not getting out of there anytime soon um even though i'm able to collect the bishop pair and smash their kingside castle and all that um it doesn't really matter because my peace activity sucks so bad uh, so I played this. Again, I'm seeing, hey, we have the opportunity to make this an exciting game. And surely they wouldn't take it, right? Surely I can spook them out of it. No. No, couldn't intimidate them. Mm-hmm. 
All right, but still, chess is a game. It's meant to be enjoyed as a game. There we go, e5. And this exposes a threat of queen h6 and knight takes g3, maybe in the reverse order. I was just really struggling with how are the hell are they going to keep this together? Um, I could not figure out how white survives this. Um, whatever engine we had running alongside us did recommend this was even, I think was recommending they just retreat their bishop or something. Maybe bishop g4 followed by bishop h3 or something is just fine. I don't know, I just completely misassessed what was going on. As did they. So I spooked them into this. This is a mistake. And black is like plus two at this point. So you just take the bishop. There are many ways to win this. Um, so you either exchange queens or you play king g6. Or maybe even king f6. Maybe even king e8. I was having a bit of a giggle fit here during the game, thinking, what if I just like ignore this bishop? Can I checkmate my opponent? Uh, but I'm pretty sure I don't actually have mate here. Like, one idea might be queen f3, or even queen d3, I'm not sure. And, like, <gasps> pardon me, it's not so easy. It's kind of an extremely hot mess. So, like, if you look at something like this and then d5, this is no good. This is very plainly no good. So... Yeah, as much as fun as it may be to fantasize about this stuff, I think knight, uh, I think, uh, what's it, the king d8 avoiding all this is just completely insane. It's fun to look at it, and it's free to look. Like, it doesn't cost you any pieces to look at it, as long as you don't play that move. Um, and then after considering that, I start considering this, which has an independent merit that okay say they do retreat this well now i go take here again and then resume the attack right um and then you start to look at well what if the king escapes well then i can like bring another attacker or maybe even check here first and if that doesn't work out pieces are still extremely loose their king is not particularly safe. I did not know. It did not feel like I had this. I did not think I was winning here. Um, this seemed like disadvantage for me. But um, there's a lot of ways this can go wrong for the opponent. But no, this has gone horribly wrong for me because my rooks are disconnected and my bishop on c8 is still not developed. Like, give me a turn or two and this position will completely flip. But um, I don't have that turn. So, yeah, ultimately I settled that, you know, as fun as it would be to play king d8 or king e7, I can't afford to do that. I have to, like, trade down into an endgame. So that's what I did. Um, and then I relaxed. Uh, game's not over yet. I relaxed, figured this is like extremely super winning for black. And it is if I just play king g6. Like, it's super easy to activate the remaining pieces. Their king's under attack. I have two bishops on an open board, and my king is safe behind their own wall of pawns. My pawns and bishops complement each other well. It's basically impossible for my opponent to pull off any sort of attack here, so I just win. Um, if I play king g6. Um, 
possibly king g8 might also be quite good. It's not easy for them to attack my king. But um, if they do manage to attack my king, it's pretty severe here. So it's better to have the king not trapped in the corner. Easy to be attacked by the rooks and the pawn. So, and the knight eventually too. The king ng6 is able to wander around a bit and avoid the rook and knight attacks. Um, so, yeah, that's just how it is. Instead, I'm like, well, I'm just completely winning. I'm going to play king e6 and b6 and bishop a6. I didn't think this c4 move considerably helped out my opponent. Um, and I was very firmly convinced that I was winning this. Bishop b7 is a very, very slack move here. If I were the slightest bit cautious, I'd just drop the bishop back and protect this square. Um, and this would take a much longer time to complete the game. But, you know, if the game does complete, I have a better chance of winning it. So, that's a trade-off. Um, instead, I played this very aggressive move that looked fun. Then I decided not to give up my rook for a knight after all, even though um, any engine would recommend doing so here. Instead, I walk square into this double pin, which I saw I could break this way, and to me this looks fine. But walking into a double pin voluntarily is kind of suicidal. e6 is very strong, and there's one last ditch way to save the position, and I didn't spot it. I was not trying particularly hard, unfortunately. I did not think there was danger here, and I'll show why I didn't. So I saw this, and then I was about to play this. And then you play that, and then you play that move, and you say checkmate, and it's not mate. And then you resign. That was like what was about to happen here. I looked for the last 10 moves. I've been setting this up. It's just not there. So I don't have that. So I lose. That's it. That's how it goes. I mean, I've been setting it up for like 10 moves. It's just not real. Um, attempting to take this some other way is not any better because the double pin is still fatal. H5, etc. is still murderous. So, um, yeah, H4, etc. just cannot be stopped unless I can get my king into the corner. Which is not even remotely possible here. So, that's the game. Fun game, though. Yeah, a lot happened this game. Super adventurous. Uh, extremely cocky on my part. Um, but it was good excitement. It's a, Chess is a game, and if you're not enjoying it, you're not doing it right. So, I mean, yeah, winning is kind of important teammates care if you win. You care if you win, but it's a game. And if you see all these wild combinations, you think, hey, you know, this would be kind of fun. Yeah, you might upset yourself or your teammates a bit going for it, but, like, it's a game, so just understand that, too. Um, hopefully I haven't upset anyone with that kind of, I don't know, is blasé the word for it? Just like, I don't know, callous or something. Like, yeah, teammates tried super hard, and ultimately our team did win the match. But, uh, yeah, I had way too much fun this game. I was thinking, like, this might be one of those games that if I win it, I might make a blog post or something about the game. 
just mentioning how exciting a game it was. Um, but that said, I didn't win it. And even if I had won it from here, like at this point, this is not super exciting anymore. It's way more exciting if the opponent retreats the bishop and I get to throw all my pieces and try to mate them. But I don't think that works either. So like the entire foundation of this concept is completely flawed. Um, so yeah, surely when writing this up, I'd be like, well, crap, now what do I do? I mean, sure, I could maybe try to revive the attack, but like this is, this looks super dodgy. I don't trust this. So there's like the king can get out. There's no mate here. Um Yeah. My entire whimsical attack is just complete fantasy and I can't play h5. And my opponent knows all this because surely they've seen this sort of thing before. And yeah, I just don't know the Queen's Indian. I tried to play something that was kind of like a Queen's Indian and, you know, I didn't castle, didn't bring out my pieces. And look what happened. So playing good principled moves is probably far more sound and interesting in the long term. And yeah, it's a long-term policy. If you want to win more, uh, play good moves. I mean, what can you say, right? So, yeah, something like this was something I was considering, and I avoided it because I saw they could do this, and I castle and they do this. And it's just no fun. Oh wait, they can't do that there because of this. Okay, yes, I was not thinking clearly. Um, hmm. yeah, I don't know. This game is more interesting than I gave it credit for. But yeah, either way, I hope you enjoyed. So, thanks for watching.